Great. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to um, item six, um, the discussion. So, yes. So uh, um, I have asked uh, Irina to um, come and do a presentation for you tonight. She is a mural producer. And since we're thinking about what kind of mural programs to have, and I did do the presentation last week on just kind of, uh, you know, the dry, uh, <laughs> the dry facts about possible mural programs, but she has experience in actually operating a mural programs. Uh, and so I just thought it would be good if she could do a presentation for you all uh, about what it is to produce murals and hints for success, hints for failure, uh, and any other thoughts she has. Uh, I'm gonna try, I, I, think, I think you can just take over the screen for me if I turn off stop share, I think you can, Irana. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for the introduction and for inviting me here. Can you hear me well and see the presentation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So my name is Arina Konishiva. I'm the founder and curator of several groundbreaking projects, starting from uh, Three Five Two Walls, the first urban art initiative in North Center, Florida. I was the consultant for Art Republic in Jacksonville for the first year of implementation, uh, project in Erie, Pennsylvania, and a big project in my home country, which is Ukraine. Everyone loves murals, and just two decades ago, we barely could see them in the streets. Wynwood was just industrial warehouse district in Miami until Tony Goldman purchased a bunch of properties and invited famous artists to paint murals on it. Today, the value of those properties vary from three to 17 million, and it's increased in price five times compared to 2011. Such increase is uh, explained by the high demand uh, for this creative district and uh, attendance of millions of people every year. The mural demand was also accelerated by the accessibility of mobile phones and social media. You know, people love taking pictures in front of murals and share them on their Instagram. But how do we find artists for a project? Uh, the most easiest way is to find artists around who you know, friends uh, and family, and um, find information on Instagram, Facebook, and that's how many curators are doing that. Or it can be managed more professionally through local art agency and boards like you guys, or uh, through an independent curator who is uh, usually hired by the city. Or you can use a platform, uh, there are many of them on the internet that feature artist profile and you can just go and select, but it's usually very limited choice. So here is the challenge how to find a talented artist. And no matter who manages the project, there are two ways. It's either direct call or open call. So direct call, you most likely will find a better talent because you reach out to the best artists you think is in the field. Here you can see photorealism um, focused artists. But disadvantage is that the direct calls uh, curators, uh, again, invite their friends, families, they are exposed to our cognitive biases. Open calls provide opportunities to everybody to apply, but we are limited by the choice uh, among those who applied and usually great artists are not applying to calls because first they are busy working through the records and second, they're just not aware about it. So here is the problem is the lack of connection between artists from around the world and people who would like to commission their services. Does local art agencies like us uh, uh, experience uh, limited software uh, such as Coda Works or Cafe originally designed for sculptures? And uh, you often may experience compl complexities in processing artist applications, but it's even more pain for artists to apply to this calls through this platform because uh, they literally have to go through a procedure similar to looking for a full-time job 
and they have to submit the resume, letter of intent, develop a proposal, which is a great creative work that may take days. Uh, they have to develop budget, timeline, and uh, provide a reference list. Uh, artists would often go down in ratings if they forgot or were not able to develop it. And please keep in mind that uh, they also have to look for other sources of income and live somehow because all these calls to artists do not guarantee that they would get the job. And finally, a pro private property owners do not really have an opportunity to submit their balls for a potential mural. So let me tell you more about funding and uh, who usually asks for murals. So first of all, these are local art agencies. They commission um, from five to a hundred public artworks, including murals use, using grants. This could be national endowments for the arts. So that can be uh, a department of state's uh, cultural affairs grants. Uh, that can be percent per art program or option tax that comes from tourism. But I'm personally most uh, often receive a request from private property owners who want to renovate their buildings, increase their price, just like in Winwood, because uh, it's, it inspires actually property owners uh, to create a mural and uh, it increases traffic to their businesses. In fact, the price to paint it one flat color is similar uh, to the price of a mural, but mural provides much more benefits. We also have some people in our communities who are not seeking for any return on investment, but simply want to have their city beautiful. And they contribute donations. If they go do, uh, do it through a nonprofit, they may get deductions from taxes. And then it's a win-win situation and it works really perfectly well. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about my personal experience. Uh, I have uh, I've been involved in mural production for six years and I have done over a hundred of them. I really lost count already. Some of them you can see in this video. I usually do everything by my own. I select artists, I develop contracts with them. And even though I confirm them as legal entities, it's still me who knows what kind of uh, issues may happen during the production uh, to and avoid any kind of copyright issues. And I buy all the materials, rent equipment, communicate with artists. And I try to select artists based on a uh, client, the wall. It's very important what is the surface of the wall, what is the size. And I try to look for artists who are already working in the field if you need horses. And I would look for artists who can do that. And if you need fishes, like in this building you see now, uh, I would find an artist who can make it in a creative way and can work on a big scale. And over the years of my experience, I came up to a conclusion that we actually can combine benefits of both direct call and an open call to artists through a platform. I've been currently working on a platform that is designed for uh, mural artists only, unlike all this all included uh, public art platforms, and it focuses on their needs. It provides uh, opportunity for everyone, equal opportunity to uh, apply, but it acts more like a curator. We first show artists space and budget, the most important things for artists. So we show them images and sometimes when you will see all those uh, open calls, they include a lot of information, a lot of text, but it's not always clear whether they're looking for a sculpture or a euro. It's not clear what the space is, there is no images, and all that creates difficulties for artists. So we try to simplify this process. Artists can simply scroll down and see uh, what they want to apply or not. And we also filter their applications and prepare comparable uh, format to local art agencies or whoever the client is. And I want to tell you more about the uh, famous artists. Uh, many people consider that it's uh, very expensive. It's very difficult to work with them, um, but it's not always that. It really depends. And one of my most favorite projects I had an opportunity to co-organize was in Chernobyl. You know about the disaster that happened in 1989 and the nuclear power plant 
explode it. We painted a mural right at the plant uh, depicting a photograph taken within days after the exposure. Another interesting project I had an opportunity to participate was near the active war zone in my home country, Ukraine. Uh, there are still shooting every day. You probably heard about the war between Russia and Ukraine. And even though it's just a few shots a day, but it's still active. And we depicted a portrait of a local teacher who actually lives in this area. Just these two projects alone attracted a lot of attention of global media. Uh, it was covered on all the major art blogs and many famous artists contacted us asking for an opportunity to paint in those areas because that's cool for them. It's a great space, it's a great awareness and they didn't even ask us for money. In Kiev, we produced uh, 50 murals from five to 26 stories tall. And there is a different kind of management of murals. It's all centralized. We only had to get permission from a mayor and then we could go ahead and paint uh, almost every building in there because it's uh, not privately owned. We provided artists freedom. They could create whatever they wanted, uh, except of nudity or something really politically uh, controversial. And they were able to incorporate a political message if they wanted uh, into the design. So for example, I'd like you to pay attention to the first mural. You can see a ballerina dancing on a bomb. Uh, it's called instability and symbolizes the economic instability and how easy it is to break this relationship and start a conflict. Uh, one of my most favorite murals in Kiev is uh, the second one with the heart. And you can see all these windows and balconies, they do not exist. The artist is just so great in photorealism, he just replicated the view. And even when you're close to the wall, you can make a difference, it looks surreal. And he incorporated the digital heart in it, uh, it's called From Russia with Love, to uh, show the conflict of like a uh, a hacker attack by Russian hackers to Ukrainian economy. And we, you can see other kind of uh, uh, artworks. And I also want to pay attention to the last one, which is 26 stories tall. It's unofficially the tallest mural in Europe. It was created for just four days using several gallons of black and white paint. And we incorporated Ukrainian word liberty into the design. So how do we measure success? It's really hard to count it as a quantitative, but it's possible through a platform or website or social media through likes and um, shares and traffic. But if you use a platform, it usually provides you uh, demographics analytics, which is uh, great information for any kind of investors or donors. But besides creating murals itself, it's very important to educate community what you are going to create, what you are creating, and what you have done. Uh, at this, here you can see an example of an exhibition where I uh, just showed objects used in the production, and we had a discussion and explanation how it all works uh, so people could appreciate this artwork more. It's also very important to engage the community. And even though you work with artists that come from other places, you can invite musicians, performers, or dancers for an opening event and celebrate all together. It creates some kind of unity and a celebration feeling. And also um, public art is all about inclusion. And why I really like working with artists from all around the world is because they all bring something different. They communicate with local people and artists. And it's all about diversity. It opens our minds about cultural differences and helps us to create more inclusive environments in our workplaces. That's it. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. And I would just uh, open this beautiful slide uh, while you are, while we are discussing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I'm sure some of us have some thoughts and questions. Anybody want to begin? Arena, well, um, yes. Go ahead, Ellen. Um, 
thank you so much for that. I learned a great deal. Um, are, are universities ever involved in these kinds of um, efforts? Yes, for example, University of Florida has art in public places a program. They use a percent per art for public construction. And they will usually invite artists through a call and use these funds. So uh, is part of what you do if is work with cities like us that if um, we want to create a mural program, you are essentially like a um, an asset or a, a vendor, uh, to maybe not such the best word there, but we can call on you and you can help us with the process. I can do everything for you guys. Yes, uh, this is uh, how I started. My first project was with the city of Gainesville. They hired me as an independent contractor. I was the curator. I selected artists. I actually developed the entire proposal, uh, including all the benefits and uh, suggesting a lineup of diverse styles. Here in Gainesville, we try to really have different kind of artists, as you can see on this image. It's not in Gainesville, but I mean the different styles. And uh, then I was involved in the production. We did have a board of, a, uh, they would approve artist selection. We discussed any kind of issues or budget, but yes, I definitely can uh, do all this. Moreover, we can use a platform that would help, uh, like that would provide equal opportunities to everyone uh, to avoid, uh, you know, just uh, biases and direct involvement that I invite only artists I know, no. I would, uh, give an opportunity to everybody to submit the proposal, but we do filter applications because usually with open calls, everybody can apply and some artists just use one uh, proposal and send it everywhere just in case something works and it not always fits. So I, I would just remove those and present something that is fit, you know, budget and style and quality. So from your experience working with Gainesville, for example, were you involved in just one mural or was it multiple murals? Um, did the city or the advisory boards say that we want to create a program and we want to you know, have them varying uh, objectives? Let's say we wanted to, in the, the next year, we wanted to have three or four murals and each one has its own objective. Is, is that sort of how it works or? Yes, so the first project, for the first project, we used Visit Gainesville funds from coming from tourists, from tax, from hotels, and uh, etc. And we had some funds from Art in Public Places board that were reserved, that were not just used, so we combined those. And we produced 10 murals by international artists the first year, and 20 small murals by local artists, like located in like uh, several places. At that time, we uh, didn't know many great artists in our community. So the goal was actually to explore, provide them opportunity to show their skills because it's really difficult to create a portfolio when you are just starting. So we did it for the local artists. And uh, the next year, unfortunately, we weren't able to get that much funds as the first year because th this money were gone and there were just other uh, art entities who wanted to share those grants. But we still invite artists uh, year over year this one to just narrow down. I currently work independently, not for the city, and they have their own board now, uh, so they just keep moving, but very slowly. So if I understood, like Gainesville, for example, said they want so many murals, they want international, and then they want local murals that were specifically for members of the community to participate in, and you were able to facilitate both international and local. Yes, uh, the goal, the original goal for this project is to claim international program that Gainesville is doing. That's why we wanted to invite international artists. Also, the goal was to foster tourism. That's why we involved uh, Visit Gainesville. So if you guys want to pursue this uh, goal, then you would have to collaborate with uh, Visit uh, Boynton Beach. I believe you should have this kind of thing. And um, the Palm Beaches, yeah. 
Yes, so you would have to work with them. You can actually work together with uh, any kind of hospitality sector, especially now that they're suffering from COVID. They would be happy to provide uh, accommodation for artists. You can uh, co collaborate with local food, you know, restaurants one by one, and that uh, helps to reduce. Um, Irania, we are losing your signal a little bit there. Okay, any other, I think we lost your audio. Any other, while she's figuring that, any other board members uh, want to comment or anything? I don't see her on anymore. Well, I want to thank, uh, I don't know if I'm saying there. Oh, am I saying it right, Aranya? I think so. Uh, I Where want to think, I don't see her on. You see her on? I do see her, yes. I see her from here. Oh, there she is, okay. But You're I talking. Just, uh... hey. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah. you now. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's Zoom, it happens, sorry. Um, so yeah, if you have any other questions. So. Uh, Irania, what um, what is uh, what entices uh, building owners? What kind of what kind of things do you have to tell building owners about their walls in order to get them to participate? And are you like, you know, double ceiling walls before you like uh, paint them? What's the, what's the pragmatics of of painting a wall and uh, um, so that it stays there and the building owner feels comfortable and the artist feels comfortable. So when I just started, I uh, visited all the suitable walls that I like downtown Gainesville and just showed property owners my portfolio with photographs from all over the places. And I told them that I'm going to invite these kind of artists that are professionals that are going to create something great. And I, I had yes and written permission from most of them, except of those that still couldn't get what is the difference between mural art and graffiti. But usually they are very open. We have never created any kind of protective layers for them. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really think it's important. If you use good quality paint, you don't even need to put ceiling over it sometimes. Uh, it may be even better because even though you put ceiling, uh, you still will need to spend a lot of money to be able to recover it in case of graffiti. So it's easier just either buff it flat or paint another mural on it. So just to save funds, I would say it's not that much important to have the clear coat over a mural, just to use a good paint. Interesting. So yeah, property owners, are, uh, it was the easiest to work with those who are wary about Wynwood Walls. You can tell them that it increases price for their property if they want to sell it rent. It's attractive for tenants who want to open a new business there. And it's clean. And if you select the buildings that need renovation, they'll be happy to accommodate it. And in some cases, they would even pay. Uh, I usually ask them to pay, but some of them not really open to this, but at least get permission and then we can get donors who can sponsor a mural. So it's, uh, it's all about collaboration. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, anybody else have any questions for Arina? Well, thank you very much. Uh, you definitely uh, shed some light of sort of kind of what we need to do. Uh, I know that this has been a, um, some of the uh, commission members for the city are very pro mural program. And I think most of us or all of us are. So uh, you're definitely helping us. So may, I hope to be working with you potentially, who knows in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate it. Have a good thank night. You, you too. Mm -hmm. Yes, Glenn, I'm here. Okay, hi. Hi, Andrew. Um, hey, how are you guys? Good. Welcome. Thank you. So yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, the first picture you're looking at here, the one plant signs and the blue signs below on the individual windows are removed uh, from it. And then we had uh, the 
picture right below the turtle had the, the name Benny's on it. And then the artist realized, obviously, Benny's wasn't in Boynton. We've removed the name Benny's from that. So it's just a pier that looks like, you know, fishing. But we really did this to highlight Boynton Beach and the community and being a part of the city and making something really flashy on a plain white building, especially since you can see it driving all the way straight down Boynton Beach Boulevard from 95. And right there by, you know, you know, the new firehouse in the city, we really want something to pop and be it. And we have seen so many people just stopping, taking photos and being in front of it, just, just to say that they were part of it and see it. Thank you. Uh, um, Cord, I, I just, can you zoom in on it just a bit there? Uh, I'm going to go down to, I have one that has the, the okay. signs removed so you can see that, right? So, but just that, you know, it is, you know, it's our, Although it's not in the ordinance, it is in, I think, in our spirit that real artists do this, uh, these kind of murals for the city. So uh, Cody Edwards has been producing murals uh, for at least uh, seven or eight years and assisted some rather um, prominent um, muralists uh, in the United States and elsewhere. Um, these are two of his pieces that he's done. He's also done another one for one plant, uh, but in, uh, in Jacksonville. Uh, so just to see his work. I did talk to him. Uh, this was this was the way it was. Uh, of course, then as as uh, Andrew just mentioned, the removal, uh, and so this is this is as it is today. See if I can. Martin, yes, go ahead. Um, is it going to be lit? Is it like so? We are working on putting lights on uh, by the bushes, shooting up at it, so at night that you can see the name Boynton Beach on it. And, and do you have the dimensions uh, of it? The dimensions mm -hmm. of the building. Of well, and the mur just the so the the, the size is it's really it's lovely. I just want to wow. Yeah, he did this all, so everybody knows, he did this all freehand, too. He walked up and just, we asked, he had a design on a piece of paper and then walked up and did it freehand. How long did it take? Uh, it took him about two and a half days, two and a half, three days. There were, there were two of them. He had an assistant, too, so. Yeah, he had, he had somebody with him to help him with, with the bottom part, but, like, the Boynton Beach and the South uh, US 1, was all done and the turtle was all done uh, by freehand. Where is this located? It, it's, it's right by the firehouse. It's kind of to the to the north of the firehouse between Boynton and, and here. It's very obvious if you're oh. driving on Boynton Beach Boulevard to the east, um, to the east toward the ocean. Okay, very nice. But the, all the all the staff here that parks in the parking lot, they like it. So I get a lot of <laughs> positive feedback from it. It's much better to look out at our windows. It's much better to see this than the wall it was. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think it's, um, I'd like to say it looks great. Uh, I. I, now it's sunk in my head. I actually took a picture of this, like, I, I don't know when, like four or five days ago, uh, like kind of whipping by when I was, I think I was coming out of, I don't know where I was coming out of, but I was there and it caught my eye and it does look really spectacular. Um, and seeing it here, I, I mean, I just like how you touched on sort of the sailfish, which is iconic and part of the branding, I guess you could say for the city. Uh, I really like the retro lettering is just really neat um and sort of the reference to the the ocean and i don't know i think it's great it's a really great job uh, is cody local or where is the uh where's the artist cody, from cody is out of uh he's out he lives in jacksonville and uh we've asked him he's done our the first one that glenn showed was that was the first mural he did in our jacksonville store of duval county for uh the city of jacksonville beach um but he's done a lot of murals uh in like uh, Europe and all across the United States. What type of business is this? Uh, our business? Yeah. Is a medical marijuana dispensary. Okay, I know where that is. Well, great. Um, 
Okay, so members from the board, I mean, in the spirit of, um, it seems like this is favorably you know, liked by everyone. Does anybody have any any particular concerns or questions about this piece on the on the board? See, no, I, I think it's great. Um, thank you. So I, if you look at action five, um, there is a, I, maybe let's look for a motion just in the spirit of this looking great that we're in approval. Um, maybe somebody can read from uh, my item A and suggest a motion. I'm looking for a motion. I make a motion to approve the mural as, as photoed, as pictured. Um, if you could read a little bit more details about the artist's name, let's get it just a little bit clearer in the address, which is provided for you there on item five, Robin. That would be great okay. to make the motion very uh, understood. All right, a motion for the Boynton Beach mural design by artist Cody Edwards on the one plant building at 202 East Boynton Beach Boulevard is approved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the one plant mural passes unanimously. And uh, Andrew, I want to thank you for your recognition of arts and the importance of it. And we hope your business flourishes. Congratulations. Thank you guys. And we appreciate it. And we're, uh, we're glad we could do it and, you know, really make it a, a part of the city for you guys.